Well, I would say, I mean, the first thing is when the, when Warden Kane came to this prison, it was known as the as the bloodiest prison in America. It was it was known as the graveyard for wardens because nobody lasted here more than two or three years. Um, it's it is actually uh, five prisons in one system. They have a death row, and uh, there there'll be prisoners on the death row, and then uh, all the way up to a trustees prison. Most of these men are in here for life because of Louisiana's law. And in Louisiana, life means life. And, uh, and so it doesn't mean, like in California, two years and then you're out on parole. Um, so when men, when men get a life sentence here, it, they're here for the rest of their lives. I'm here at Glen Airy, the Navigator's gated retreat facility in Rocky Mountains of Colorado. And this place just epitomizes the grace and the peace and the beauty of God's creation. But last April, we were in a different gated community. We were down at Angola Prison in Angola, Louisiana. We came up with the idea of the Angola Celebration because so many people go into prison to do prison ministry in the form of a show to entertain the inmates there. What we wanted to do was to go into the prison with some tangible um, events that they could participate in that would glorify uh, their humanity. Uh, prisons by their very nature can be very inhuman places. Everyone uh, dresses the same, they have a number instead of a name, they live in rooms or cells that are all pretty much the same, they go through the same kind of routine. And so what we wanted to do was to bring a piece of the beauty of God in the form of art, drama, um, music, uh, storytelling, uh, entertainment, but not just entertainment for a show. We wanted to create a, a, an opportunity where inmates could be a part of the event as opposed to just experiencing a performance, where they could take the things that they learned and make their lives more beautiful within the prison walls. Yeah, we really appreciate you all being here. This is a very unique prison and uh, it really made a change because of the Bible College and uh, that's really what the catalyst was and it was a God thing and the culture changed in the prison as the inmates changed themselves and really taught us a lot about rehabilitation and really taught us that corrections means to correct deviant behavior. It doesn't mean to lock and feed and it doesn't mean to torture, doesn't mean to torture and torment. It means to correct deviant behavior. We've worked with Warden Kane for five years now at Angola Prison, and he's a great man of God and has tried to uh, honor God in the way that he has uh, run the prison. Um, what he wants uh, from, from us and from others who are involved is not just to come and put on a show for the inmates, but he wants us to come and interact with the inmates. The Angola celebration was really a series of events that went over five days. Uh, the first night we were there, we had the Apostle Paul come and share with us. Uh, Rob Moritz, who dramatizes the Apostle Paul in costume, came and delivered part of Paul's letter to the group in the chapel. Be strong in the grace that's in our Lord Jesus Christ. And all the things that you have heard from me, in the presence of many witnesses, commit to faithful men who will be able to teach others as well. And be willing to endure hardship as a good soldier of our Lord Jesus Christ. It's a great experience because uh, unlike a play, uh, Paul walks through the audience and interacts individually with the men. On Wednesday, we had Don Piper come to share his story. Don wrote the book 90 Minutes in Heaven and detailed his account of how he had actually died in an automobile accident and was dead for 90 minutes before he was brought back to life. So, the four, four paramedics that came out there worked on me. And they did everything they could. I mean, they did everything they could. Every, every trick they'd ever been taught, everything medically possible. They tried to resuscitate me, and they were unsuccessful. I was pronounced dead on the scene. Which brings up an interesting point, I think. What am I doing in Angola if I was dead on the scene? I bet you've asked yourself that same question. What are you doing in Angola? Let me ask it a different way. What are you doing in that?
help. During the day, we had 32 volunteers and navigator staff going cell to cell through the prison, talking with men individually, uh, asking them questions about their life, hearing their story, being able to share stories with them, being able to pray with them if they uh, so desired. It was a touch for the prison population with the outside world that they so desperately need and desire. During the celebration, we also brought in Dan Nelson, a professional artist. Uh, Dan is a tremendous teacher as well as artist, and during his time in the prison, he actually conducted classes on art. These weren't arts and crafts arts. This was really perfecting your, your skill as an artist. What part of my body is moving? Fingers. Fingers, exactly. I don't paint that way. But now when I'm painting, what am I moving? My whole arm. Hey, here's the thing. The part of your brain that controls your arm is a better artist than the part of your brain that controls your fingers. The third night, we had Angola's Got Talent. And Angola's Got Talent was an opportunity for the inmates to share with us their musical talents and abilities. Uh, the navigators tonight will be doing a talent contest tonight. We have six bands lined up. And they'll each sing two songs. And so it's a lot of excitement in the house tonight. After the performance, then we had uh, several professional musicians that we'd brought with us critique the different bands and groups that performed so that they were given value and really understanding that they were growing and could grow as musicians even in the context of a prison. A group of that is about to show in Atlanta on the Daddy King, Dr. King Sr. And he had the best organist, best pianist you can possibly think of that played exclusively for him. And I guarantee you, if he had heard you play, you would have been his personal organist. <laughs> If God's grace and love can be shown anywhere, then it needs to be able to be demonstrated in a prison. Um, some of these men have become good friends of mine over this time period, and, and I look forward to the time when I can go back and share with them. Uh, in a way, uh, I envy them because in a prison setting, they can focus so intently on their relationship with one another and with Christ. They don't have many of the annoyances or distractions that we have in the regular world. and so. Uh, some of the most godly men I know are behind bars in a prison. On Friday, we put on a musical performance with professional musicians from all over the country, a gospel jazz concert that Warden Kane had called uh, in the year previous the best concert he'd ever heard in prison. And we've had some good ones, he said. Um, but uh, these uh, jazz performers with the Count Basie Orchestra and from several universities across the country uh, performed for the men and then stayed around afterwards to talk with the inmates about music and how to perform and uh, the life of a musician on the road. Uh, one of the things that we always emphasize in our program is that no matter where you are, you can continue to grow as a human being. Uh, not only in your knowledge, but in your, in your craft, in your skill, in your abilities, whether that's in art or music, storytelling, uh, drama, whatever that might be, whatever way you choose to express yourself. These are things that help bring um, humanity to a place like a prison, which is anything but human.